Hello. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to create a really professional looking classroom newsletter using MailChimp. So if you haven't already, you'll need to create a MailChimp account. Uh, if you already have one, you just need to simply log in. MailChimp's a great way of building up a mailing list using your parent emails. Of course, make sure to have permission to add your parents to your mailing list. Um, but MailChimp allows you to create a really nice professional looking newsletter which you can easily send out each week or bi-weekly or monthly, um, however you uh, see fit. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to create a campaign. So up in the top right corner you can see the button here, Create Campaign. We're just going to click on that. And for our purposes and for most teachers, the regular old campaign at the top here is um, what we would want and fits our needs. Um, the next thing you need to think about is um, whether you want to send this to your full mailing list or if you want to just send this to a segment of your class mailing list. So of course for my needs I'm going to send it to the entire list and click Next. You need to name your campaign. This is for your own purposes. I might just put here February 2nd newsletter and this is something that will help you to just say organize and figure out which newsletter you are working with. Uh, it keeps things organized on your side of things. Now the email subject, on the other hand, this is what will be in the subject line of your email. This is what parents will read when they get um, an email from you in their inbox. So you'll want this to be clear and effective. Um, I usually write with something very similar to um, uh, news from the uh, from room 10. This might be a good subject line for my classroom. Um, you'll then want to include your your name. Uh, this should be your full name. Uh, something that's recognizable. You may want to put your school name afterwards. Uh, something that will let the parents know that this is from somebody that they know and somebody they can trust. Uh, next, make sure you have your email in address in there, the email address you want to connect with your email, so usually your school email account. Down at the bottom, you'll see different tracking options. Uh, these are very handy. Um, automatically, a few tracks are automatically selected. So um, the first one is track opens, and MailChimp will track uh, who opens your newsletter and how often or how many times they open it. This is very useful kind of get a good idea of how um, how many parents are using your newsletter and reading it each week. Um, it can also track clicks um, from the links that you embed in your newsletter and uh, any plain text uh, clicks as well. Uh, over here uh, on the right side you'll also notice that another field is clicked personalize. Um, this is automatically selected for you because it personalizes the email using the, the receiver's information, their, their, their name, the first name and the last name. And this helps to make sure that your newsletter does not go into a spam folder. Next, we'll click the next button in the bottom right corner and we'll begin to um, choose our template or our layout. Um, MailChimp does offer many themes and depending on your needs you might want to look through the different themes that are available to you. Um, many of them are professionally designed, they look very professional and you might be able to find one that you like. Um, you may also, once you have started doing this regularly, you can save your templates and then you can modify them for different newsletters, different campaigns as they call them. Uh, for today, we're going to start with basic, and we'll just start with a very simple uh, drag-and-drop feature here. Um, and I think we'll just start with the first one here, the one-column feature. Uh, there are different um, layouts with different numbers of columns, uh, sidebars, or you can even just start with a very simple blank format. Okay, uh, We'll choose the one-column, drag-and-drop. Click Select, and you'll be taken to your workspace, your dashboard. This is where you're going to add your content and edit the design. Um, and it's very 
clear and very straightforward. We're going to start right at the top and work our way down. Okay. So the very first thing you want to do is um, click on the pen or the pencil here, which will indicate to edit that block. Uh, if you don't want that block, you can delete the block. If you want to duplicate it, you can just click duplicate. Uh, well, let's just edit it. And usually um, this area, the first area that they have there is to offer a short preview. I usually just write my tagline in there again. So news from room 10. So very simple and we'll click save and close. You don't want that to be too big, um, but because it is text, you can always edit the text size. You can edit the text font. You can change the alignment. Uh, lots of different things that you can work with here, very similar to in any word processing um, software. So when you're finished, uh, click save and close. The next place here, they give you a nice place to put in a banner image. Um, if you want to make a banner, um, I would suggest going to banner.photer.com. Uh, you can make really nice professional looking banners with very little time. Um, this is a very simple banner that I've created here, uh, just using a background and some text, but you can upload student photos, uh, classroom photos, photos from recent school events, and make this into a really nice photo banner for your newsletter. And you can easily save those banners over here. Um, as JPEG files or as PNG files and just give it a name and you can access that later. So that's what I've done. I've added that to my um, my MailChimp account. So I'm going to quickly click here and upload that image. Um, I've already uploaded it into my MailChimp uh, media file manager. So I'm just going to click here um, on that and click select. If you haven't uploaded it already, you can just quickly click upload and you can upload that file. Okay, and I'll just click select and very quickly my banner is placed in there. Click save and close. All right, now it's time to start uh, the body of your email. So here we have a very simple uh, design. We just want to again click on it. Uh, you can click the pen or you can just click on the body here and then you can begin to edit that. A um, Couple things to notice. Uh, they're using different um, styles here. So they're are lots of different styles. You have headings, uh, TOC heading, heading two, TOC heading two, heading three, heading four. Uh, lots of different uh, formats there that you can work with. You can easily change your uh, fonts. You can change the size. Uh, all of that's very simple and easy to work with. So you can customize this as you see fit. So um, I'm going to take that out and and I'm going to actually take that out as well. I'm going to start with just a very simple um, letter format here. Okay, so I'm going to just want to put it as a default text. So, and I might start with Dear Parents. And each week what I do is I usually will begin with a very simple uh, paragraph or two, just talking to the parents about any important issues, any important events coming up, and I send them this reminder here. Okay, so you can just, um, this week has been a lot of fun, and you can get into some of the reasons why. Okay, and so we'll just click save that there. Now, um, one of the things I like to do, um, of course, I like to talk about the things that we're learning in class. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this image and caption feature here. Um, so one of the things I do is I write about what we work on in the different subject areas. So here, uh, if I click on that, I can edit that in my editing space over here. So the first thing I'll do is write literacy. So if I'm writing about literacy, I'll start with that there. And uh, I just begin with this week in literacy, the students, I've been learning to, and I'll get into the different specifics of that. Um, over here, um, I can also add an image. Um, I found a nice image here um, doing a quick Google search. Um, I've, I always make sure to use the advanced search features to make sure it's an image that's free to use and share. Um, I don't want to break any copyright. So I'm going to upload that image, or in this case, just select it as it's already in my media files. 
and I get that nice image there. And then over here on the right, the parents can read about what we're doing in reading and writing um, in our literacy class. Um, just to make that literacy word stand out, I'm going to just change that to a nice heading feature there. And then uh, that's a little bit large. Maybe I'll change that to heading two. That looks a bit better. All right. When you're finished working with that, you can just click save and close. Uh, another thing that you might want to think about is just the style of it. Um, you can access different things here. Uh, you can again change the font. So the font will change automatically in different places, uh, the size, and you can play around with that to make it how you'd like it to be. Okay, so those things are all things that you can change very easily to personalize it. Um, the settings feature here, uh, you might want to change where the image is positioned. So right now I have the caption on the right and the image is on the left, but I can easily change that by clicking on that. Maybe I want the, the, the text on the left, the caption on the left, and the image on the right. So you can easily decide how you want to do that. You can also do it top and bottom and different ways like that. It's all stuff that you can play around with to see how you would like your newsletter to look. Uh, you can also change how wide uh, the caption is. You might want the caption to be a little bit longer if you're writing more text. So you might want to take up a bit more space. That'll also, might, uh, by default, make that image smaller. So it's, again, how you want the newsletter to look and how you want to customize it. You can also change the number of images as well. When you're finished, save and close. And I'm just going to add another uh, image and caption in below here. Drop that block in. Uh, this time I'm going to do mathematics, so I'm going to quickly um, add a picture. Uh, this time I'm going to need to upload a picture, so I'm going to click Upload. And I found that nice math picture, again, using my advanced search features, making sure it's free to use um, on my newsletter. So um, now I'm going to quickly edit that text, just like I did before, so we'll just get rid of that. And I'm just going to type mathematics, and then below in math class the students are and then I can finish the content there again I want my formatting to be very similar throughout so I'm going to just quickly change that heading again I had chosen heading 2 for my first block so I want to make sure I keep with that same pattern okay and because the first one I, I chose different settings I want to probably consider the the same thing it before I chose two-thirds, so I might want to do the same thing there. Again, it'll make my formatting look uh, better, look more consistent across the newsletter. All right, I'm going to click to go back to the contents. One other thing I might want to do is change the alignment so that mathematics is in the center. And again, I can go back and change this one as well, change that alignment, and make that centered as well. These are all things that you can do uh, to your own preferences. Another thing that parents enjoy um, seeing each week are images. So one of the things that you can do is to drag and drop an image group into your newsletter. And if you're taking lots of classroom images, um, you can easily up upload those to your MailChimp media folder and then quickly add those images in here. Uh, so it's a nice quick, easy way to add some images of the students. Let the parents see what, thing, what things you're doing at school and see those happy faces on your uh, students. Uh, other things that you can work on, um, you can include some button, buttons into your newsletter as well. I like to include um, two buttons um, in my newsletter, one as a contact me button and one as a link to my class blog. So um, you can just very simply change the text, contact me or contact your and your name, and uh, you can put in your email address like so, and then just add in your email address. Very simple, very simple, easy to do. You can easy um, also um, add in a message subject or a message body as well. There's different advanced options as well. These are all things that you can work with. Um, Let's look at how we can change that. Right now it's quite dark and gray. You can also change the style of your button, okay? Very simply, I'm gonna, you can decide if you want a border. Uh, right now there's a, a border around that. I'm gonna click none. That'll take the size down a little bit as well. Um, and I wanna change the background. Right now it's very dark gray. I might want something a little bit more colorful, a little, uh, 
let's take a look down here. We have some common colors. You can also use this scale button here and choose something there. So that looks a bit nicer there. So I got the contact me. And then I've got my email address in there. Uh, I also like to maybe add in a um, link to our classroom website. So again, I might write in there, visit our class website to learn more. Okay, and again, you can quickly choose web address and type in the URL. And there are advanced options again. It's automatically selected for that to open in a new window. Um, and there's some extra advanced features there we don't need to get into. And so that's another thing that you can do to make your newsletter even better. Uh, if you want to add a footer to your newsletter uh, with some contact information, you can also add that in. Uh, if you do that, you might not need to include your contact me button. Um, it also gives uh, people the option of unsubscribing from your list um, or changing their subscription preferences, which is a nice feature as well. But uh, these things are automatically in the newsletter at the bottom. This just increases the size of them. Okay, Your newsletter will automatically have a um, footer built in and it will give those parents those options as well. Okay, It will also give them um, links to your information. So very simply that was how we can create a basic newsletter. Uh, the next thing you want to do after you've done that, um, you can confirm your details and you can send that out. Uh, you can change um, any details at this point. Uh, you want to review and make sure everything is as you want it to be. Uh, you can check your information, check the subject line, uh, check your methods of tracking. Um, if you want, you can include some social media cards. Uh, I haven't included anything like that uh, in mine. Um, you can uh, make sure to check your preferences and see that everything's as you want. You might also want to just quickly preview your email up here at the top right, preview and test. You can enter your preview mode. This will give you an idea of what your newsletter would look like to the parents who receive it. Um, so you can quickly check that it is how you want it to appear. You can check any um, last minute errors or mistakes that you want to fix um, or any content that you want to change. Um, you notice here also the parents have the option of viewing the email in their web browser rather than in their email. And then you can kind of go through and just check the newsletter and you can also see what it would look like if it was viewed on a mobile device. So if you're happy with that, uh, you can just click the X, the close button there. And again, you can either choose to schedule your email to go out, or you can just click to send. So um, that is how you set up a great classroom newsletter. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, I hope you found it useful.